Hi everyone! For those of you who are new, my name is Kelly. I'm a fourth year medical student. I started out on Instagram as at Kelly Takes Medicine and now I'm here on YouTube. There's been a lot of misinformation going around about getting into medical school with under average grades and MCAT scores and I wanted to make this video to kind of clear things up a bit. And I will say it isn't easy and everyone's journey is different. The same things that worked for me may not work for everybody else, but I will say that there is a strategy that I feel like can apply to everyone. When it comes to majors, it doesn't really matter what your major is as long as you fulfill the prerequisites for medical school. Even though my major was biological sciences, a lot of people major in like public health, economics, and totally unrelated fields. What's pretty common is for people to take gap years or what I like to call growth years where they take those prerequisite classes if they did graduate with a non-science major. Sometimes it even helps boost your application and helps you stand out because a lot of people, you know, who apply to medical school are all bio majors or some sort of farm or, you know, physiology science major. About grades, so I graduated in 2016 and my GPA was overall 3.5 and my science GPA was 3.3 but the key is an upward trend so for me I averaged 3.1 to 3.2 my first years in medical school an important piece of background I was a first generation college student uh, meaning I was the first in my family to go to college and graduate and so that transition was pretty rough I didn't really know how to study I had a lot going on at home I felt like I had a lot of responsibility and I didn't know how to manage stress or manage time that's the explanation for for, for my grades. The second two years, I averaged, so sophomore and, or sorry, junior and senior year, I averaged like 3.7 to 4.0. I did very well my last two years. And I think that's because after a while, I started getting the hang of things. I started taking care of myself uh, emotionally and mentally. I joined a lot of extracurricular activities that made me happy and that helped a lot. When it comes to GPA, upper trend is super important. And as you can see, like my 3.3 science GPA is still not that great but if you go into my application for my last two years the committee will be able to see like the average was like 3.8 and it's in classes that are upper division which i think carries a lot more weight when it comes to the mcat i didn't do super well in the mcat but i also didn't do horrible either but it's still under average so i got a 507 with the new mcat scoring scale and i think at the time when i was applying 510 was considered like solid, it wasn't like great. So it wasn't low enough for me to want to retake it even though a lot of advisors told me to retake it. It's just at the time, I there was a lot going on in my family. Emotionally, financially, I just couldn't afford to retake it and so I didn't. Well, I was hoping that the rest of my application would you know, carry more weight. There's a question about whether or not you should do a post back. And I think that if your GPA is like below 3.0, I would say definitely consider doing a post back because that can really boost your application and show medical school admission committees that you can handle for level coursework. For MCAT, I think it would be wise to reconsider taking it if you score below 500, but GPAs and MCATs, I feel like that all depends on where you apply for school, whether it be like top tier medical schools or MD or DO schools. Okay, now let's talk about experiences because experiences are really going to determine the kind of person you are. And I think it's a good idea to have well-rounded experiences. If I'm reading an application and I see there's too much research and not enough like clinical exposure or not enough like community service. To me, that's not a well-rounded applicant. I think that a good general rule is to have one research experience, one community service experience, and then one clinical. Research is sort of plus or minus for me. I didn't have a ton of research. I just got exposed to it to see if I liked it and I didn't. And I think that's okay. But the other areas should be strong. So community service, clinical, and then some other thing that you are very passionate about. Now let's talk about the application. So here's where I think a lot of what I did could apply to everyone. I think that if you have under average uh, scores, while it's not the only thing that matters, it still matters. You can have under average scores, but you have to compensate for that in some other way. And that would be like your application and the experiences that I talked about. When you apply to medical school, you sort of want to think about like, what is your theme? Like what makes you tick? For example, for me, I am very passionate 
about the underserved population, geriatrics, mentorship. When you're writing a personal statement and when you're talking about your top three most meaningful activities in your application, you want to make sure that what you say and how you say it aligns with what your theme is as a, as a person. Like what is your mission basically? Kind of going back to experiences, that's why I always tell my mentees that it's super important to engage in what you are passionate about because then everything else kind of falls into place. Like the way you talk about it in your personal statement, the way you talk about it in your application is going to come out naturally and more genuinely. Personal statement I would say is probably going to be more important than other people's applications. Personal statement is a chance for you to tell your story in a meaningful way. I honestly think that my personal statement was probably kind of like what carried me. I talked about why medicine but there are some things that you should and should not say in a personal statement. And now that I'm thinking about it, I probably will make a separate video for this because there's a lot that goes into the personal statement that I don't have time to cover in this one video. But in terms of the application, apply early. Um, I submitted it on the first day that I could um, because it opens a month before you submit. So take advantage of that month and upload everything. Make sure you have all your transcripts, your letters of recommendation. Make sure you've written all your most meaningful activities um, so that on day one you could submit. Because the earlier you submit, the earlier you will get your secondaries. The earlier you get your secondaries, the earlier you can submit them. And then the earlier you can get an interview, hopefully. Early interview is better because they do fill up some schools. It is sort of like a first come first serve. If they interview, they like you, that's a spot for them that they're going to hold and some kind of interview in, in batches. And then a point on secondaries is that you want to pre-write your secondaries so that you can submit them within like two to three days of receiving your secondary. And so this is just to statistically boost your chances for an interview. Another point that I want to make is when you're applying to maximize your chances of getting into medical school, if you're passionate about becoming a physician, it does not matter what the two letters are at the end of your name. And I always recommend for all pre-meds to apply to both MD and DO schools because I mean, it's there's no difference in the end, like it doesn't matter. If you are short for time, and you're you know, 30 something years old and you're a pure changer, then applying to DO schools is a wonderful option. Some people apply to DO schools because they just love the mission. I identify with the philosophy of DO schools too. And I actually applied to more DO schools than MD schools. I only happened to get one acceptance to an MD school. So if it weren't for that acceptance, I probably would be at a DO school and nothing would be different. Well, some things would be different, but that's something else that we could talk about another time as well. When it comes to applying to schools, look up their mission statement and their values because if your application is heavy on research and it's mainly community service like you're not going to want to apply to like Harvard or like some other school that is very focused on you know research so you probably want to apply to schools that are more geared towards like you want to apply to schools that want people like you and you want to apply to schools that have a mission that aligns with yours because that maximizes your chances of, of getting in as well so the last part of this video is for my friends from underrepresented backgrounds so for me I kind of think of underrepresented differently because I think that the definition should be expanded a bit more to make sure that people are not falling through the cracks. So in addition to underrepresented minority, which includes like Black, Latinx, Native Hawaiian, Southeast Asian, underrepresented also includes people from lower socioeconomic backgrounds, people who are first generation college graduates. And so for me, I was low income and first gen. The application actually has a checkbox for first gens to kind of indicate to medical schools. So you want to make sure you check that because that way they can kind of look at your application more holistically. The other thing is if you're low income, you should apply for the fee assistance program, which I can't remember how many schools it pays for, but I think it covers up to like 15 schools, which helped, but I ended up applying to like 40 schools. That's including MD and, and DO. The MSAR is also free if you're a part of the, if you do get FAP, the MSAR is like medical school admissions requirements or some, it's basically a database where you can see all the average staff stats um, like average GPA and MCAT for each school and then you can also see like the mission statement of each school and I use that to to figure out what schools I wanted to apply to. For the disadvantaged essay, it's important to talk about your experiences honestly, but also make sure you talk about how you, how you grew from it and 
you know, what it has taught you. And it's the perfect place to talk about resilience. I know that was a lot. So just to summarize, number one, post back, figure out if that's right for you. Number two, upward trend in GPA if you can. Number three, make sure you perfect that personal statement. Make sure you apply as early as humanly possible without compromising quality. Number four, apply broadly to MD and DO schools. Number five, experiences. Make sure you are choosing experiences that are right for you, that you're passionate about, and that make you the most well-rounded. Like I said, I know that was a lot. If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. I will definitely make it a priority to respond to them because I know how challenging this process was. And if you found this helpful, make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks guys.